may we listen for the words of God in the word of God. Amen. Everything feels different this morning. Stood in front of a camera in church. That's not how I expected this to be. But we've been following a series through the chapters of Mark as Jesus heads to Jerusalem as he knows that he is going to the cross. As he prepares his disciples for the reality of that and for what will happen beyond. And we've seen how the disciples have struggled to understand and how Jesus has had to tell them time and time again. Here we see not the disciples now but the authorities around Jesus, the, the others who are, are wanting to know who this Jesus is, questioning his authority. That's what's happened in the passage before the parable of the vineyard. That's what will happen in the passage afterwards. And so this parable of the vineyard is a, it's a comment on who Jesus is and where his authority comes from and our responsibility as we respond to that. It's one of those parables where it's, it's fairly easy to see where this goes in Christian tradition. We, we know who we should be thinking of when we hear talk of a beloved son. But notice this parable is about the rejection of Jesus. And it's very easy for us to, to start to, uh, to play games and saying, well, that group of people over there rejected Jesus. Jesus, this group of people over here rejects Jesus. Maybe we need to actually notice how even within our own church and with our own churches, we reject Jesus all the time. When we choose the safe option, when we choose to exclude rather than include, when we choose to judge rather than to love, when we choose safety rather than sacrifice. Jesus came with a clear intent to save us all, to save the world, to give himself that we might live. And as we read this parable, we hear of the cost of that, we hear of the rejection. We hear of the death and sacrifice. But we also hear how God is doing something new through this. This stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. In the midst of all our great religious structures, all of which are being challenged today as we seek to know what it is to worship God in the midst of a closure of churches and mosques and synagogues and temples and gurdwaras, as we cannot now worship together, whatever our faith, whatever our belief. We're challenged again to see that it was never supposed to be just about structures and buildings and organisations. But rather Jesus came to say that he is the one on whom and in whom we can build. And as other structures are no longer available to us today, we can still as we talk together, as we listen to one another via Skype and FaceTime and phone, or even talking over the garden fence as it's still just about possible to do in some places. As we share together, we do so knowing that the Son of God gave himself for us and on him we build, in him we trust. 
when those who first heard this parable heard it, they realised that it had been spoken against them. May we have the courage to listen for rebuke as well as encouragement in the word of God. May we have the courage to hear God in Christ challenging us to live differently, to love more. We are now only a few weeks away from the remembrance of Good Friday and the celebration of Easter Sunday. And again, it will look different this year. But the reality on which our beliefs stand is no different today than it has ever been. The God who so loved the world that he sent his only son is still at work in us and in God's world. So as we journey with Jesus towards the cross, may we journey in trust and faith in him. May we respond to his call upon our lives, even in extraordinary times. Amen.